the hour, brought the hour shah, brought the hour, brought the hour shah, brought the hour, brought the hour shah. This is the Akara Gakaha from the light of the Gentiles, the spirit of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shah. First off, I'd like to give all praises to all praises and affinity honors to Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shah. Double honors to the Apostle GMS that pushed out this truth and loyalty and sincerity. Um, this little small segment, this small sit down is going to be entitled Pirates of Yahweh Shah. You know, the spirit of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shah, I feel like um, we should have a little more emphasis on what the real treasure in this truth is. You know, you have a lot of people out here right now that's all lusting over money, that's lusting over the lust of life, you know, that's lusting over certain um, things that they can only see with their eyes instead of the real treasures that they should be looking for, which is this truth. So <clears throat> with that being said, I felt like also to break it down even deeper, you know, who looks for treasure? And as we all know, pirates are the ones that look for treasure. So the spirit of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shah, you know, I looked up basically the most notorious, most famous pirate that ever lived, which his name is Edward Teach, AKA they called him Blackbeard. Um, you know, they've made certain movie references about him. He's actually in a movie called Pirates of the Caribbean. Uh, for this segment, I'm not gonna use any clips of him from that movie, but that's something that you can really check out on your own. Um, of course, throughout history, they whitewashed his image, or a kind of classism, if you will, his image to um, make it seem more, uh, more Esau supremacy, if you will, friendly. But we all know, through the, we all know, or what I'm going to bring out through the scriptures, through the spirit of Yahweh Bashim Yahushua, to prove that this man, this most famous pirate, was actually an Israelite, and to prove that even though they always said that he was out there looking for buried treasure and looking for gold, which he did acquire, to prove what actual gold or what actual treasure he actually was looking for. So. The title that we have right here for this article is called Blackbeard's Treasure, African Slaves. It goes on to say, the whereabouts of the mythical treasure of the notorious Blackbeard has bewitched folks ever since the smoke cleared following the battle of Archer, Archer Cope 292 years ago, minutes after Blackbeard's death. Royal Navy sailors began a search for the pirates' ill-gotten gains, but they found no chest of gold, silver, or jewels. Now you have to say to yourself, this is a pirate, and they never found any type of treasure. Now it was specific, it says, but they never found no chest of gold, silver, or jewels. Now it didn't say they didn't find a treasure, just maybe the treasure is synonymous with something else, instead of being synonymous with gold or silver. So as we continue, it says, however, there was a treasure, so there was a treasure, just wasn't of, of a hard, hard material substance. It says, however, there was a treasure, and it likely survives to this day. More than 250,000 artifacts have been recovered from the Queen Anne's Revenge, including the archer recently brought to the surface. Few experts, however, have considered the cargo of flesh and blood transported by the famous ship. Now, let's read that again. It says, cargo of flesh and blood transported by the famous ship. Now, last, I've, last, I've, uh, last time I've, I've ever seen any type of gold or silver or, or jewels, they've never had any flesh or blood on it. You know, I, I doubt that, you know, you go to, you know, actual, actual, uh, jewelry store and say, you know, let me get that flesh and blood gold right there. You know, so obviously that means that in this context it must be talking about what? People. Right? But let's go even deeper and see what it's talking about as for what type of people. It says in November 1717, North of Barbados, so let's which lets you know that he was always around the islands, you know, which is another indicator. It says Blackbeard captured the French slaver La Concord. So this was an actual ship that specifically was for transporting slaves. And he captured it. 
I wonder why. You know, why would somebody go, go about their way to capture a uh, slave ship? In the fall of 1717, Blackbeard leads a small flotilla into the Caribbean. He positions two sloops directly on the middle passage of the transatlantic slave trade route. Blackbeard waits, knowing that some sort of vessel is going to arrive from uh, the slave coasts of Africa um, loaded with goodies, and he's going to wait for it. When Blackbeard saw the ship for the first time, it must have been a dream come true, because it's exactly the vessel he was hoping would come along. He looks through his spyglass, and here is an incoming slave vessel. It is recorded that on this voyage, La Concorde is carrying more than 500 slaves. To make room for them, her owners have removed many of her cannon. It's a fatal mistake. Since there was no period of hostilities during her operation as a slave ship, she did not need that many guns. It was just taking up room, adding additional weight to the vessel, and so uh, her armament was essentially cut in half. Let's see, renaming her the Queen Anne's Revenge. Historians have said he wanted a ship as, pow as powerfully armed as a Royal Navy warship uh, patrolling the West Indies. So he wanted a powerful ship. And he wanted a powerful ship. That's the historians have said he wanted a ship as powerful. Right, so he wanted a powerful ship, a powerful, um, you know, a, a, a powerful arsenal. And so as he captured these different ships, especially this one, which was his most famous and notorious ship, talked about all throughout history, you know, this was his main ship, which, uh, you know, helped him on his quest to even acquiring even more treasure. She has only 14 guns. Blackbeard has 20 at his disposal. And while he commands 150 pirates, sickness has reduced La Concorde's crew to just 36. So many crew had died when the encounter took place, both scurvy and what was called the bloody flux, which was anemic dysentery, which was a big problem with uh, sailors in, in that particular day and age, particularly with vessels uh, visiting the west coast of Africa. Concord's crew is incapacitated, and the terrifying Blackbeard easily seizes the slave vessel without a fight. But let's look deeper at what the treasure is. I believe it was to serve a different purpose, right? So it wasn't for um, gold and silver, you know, things that we wear around our neck and put on our hands. It says six months later, Blackbeard sailed to North North Carolina and purposely wrecked. He purposely wrecked. The queen, the queen Anne's revenge, in the uh, ent entrance of Beaufort and Let's, if I'm saying it correct. Their records say he disbanded his 400 men company, tricked all but his closest allies out of their communal communal treasure, and left aboard a small slop. Ten days later, Blackbeard arrived at Bath, where he surrendered and applied for a royal pardon. Okay, so dispositions filed by former members of Blackbeard's crew, the ones he left behind, are very detailed. When Blackbeard sailed to Bath, he had within them 60 African men. Hold up. Now, why would he be sailing with 60 African men? You know, if this was a, if this was Esau or another nation, they wouldn't have them as, you know, they wouldn't have, matter of fact, let's, let's read this next sentence to break it down deeper. Historians have marveled at the apparent diversity of Blackbeard's crew. Noted that six out of ten of Blackbeard's pirates were black. Hold up. You know, last I checked, you, I, I never would have seen Esau, uh, you know, having Israelite or slave crew members. You know, so why would he be with a crew as a pirate of, it says six out of ten of them being Israelites? You know, and that's his, and that's his crew. You know, those are people that you you're close with, that people that you know. Just like how you have different camps out there. You know, you have 
in the spirit of Yahweh, Shem Shah, you know, you have all these different camps that set up, you know, to preach this truth. Those are people that's close to you, you know, people that you break bread with. So at, so why would you have Israelites on your crew unless maybe you are Israelite in yourself? Through the spirit, you can tell he was. The question is, did he target her specifically for her human cargo? Two artifacts point directly to La Concorde's history as a slave ship. First, a manacle. It's lined with rope, presumably to keep the enslaved from developing sores and infection. Healthy slaves were worth more. And yet, his actions show this wasn't what he came for. Blackbeard sets the French captain and his slaves ashore on the small island of Beckway. But about 60, 61 of them, Blackbeard keeps and they leave on Queen Anne's Revenge. And in subsequent eyewitness encounters with Queen Anne's Revenge, there are 60 and then more black crew members described who are invariably described as if they are full-fledged ordinary members of the crew. It says what they don't tell you is that five months later, when Blackbeard was killed at Arc, uh, not up, Acre, Hope, he had aboard only six Africans. What happened to the others? See, so now, you know, I just did that to start this lesson off to let you know, you know, this person named Blackbeard. When you look at certain images that they show, you know, again, it's kind of, you know, they use the iconoclasm to die, to, um, to, uh, basically whitewash it, you know, to um, bring down the image, but he was a very fierce-looking um, individual, very fierce-looking pirate. He uh, struck fear into the hearts of men. You know, he would have uh, these kind of lighters that come from his hat and from his beard to spark up, so not only would you see, um, not only would you see um, light from him, but you see the smoke, of course, because it's almost like it'd be smoking, which will have smoke around his head to make him look more fearsome, right? So, uh, he also was, again, known as the most notorious pirate, you know, and basically what he did was he went, he, he conquered the seas, basically picking up Israelite slaves, wherever he could find them. That was his main treasure, to pick them up and basically give them salvation, you could say. You know, eventually, of course, you know, he died off, but um, that's what he was doing, especially around, like, you know, North uh, California, what, what is it, North uh, um, Slovakia. just said it of Carolina and um I think on especially on some parts of like West Africa which as you know Israelites are predominantly in West Africa as for being on Africa itself predominantly a lot of them are in West Africa so um we're gonna start this off by going to oh and also before I start to let you know that basically again the treasures that we're looking for in this truth is basically, you know, the Bible, which is synonymous with, which is synonymous with brothers coming to this truth being, you know, precious rubies and gems, and also just knowing that the wisdom in itself is a treasure. So the treasure is wisdom, and wisdom is a treasure. It's synonymous. So with that being said, we're gonna go and prove that by going to Sirach 125. It says, the parables of knowledge are in the treasures of wisdom. It says. But godliness is in abomination to a sinner. Now, for this, for the sake of this, uh, for the sake of this, uh, sit down on this edification, we're gonna scratch out this part right now. We're gonna focus on the first part, which says the parables of knowledge are in the treasures of wisdom. So basically, you gotta look at wisdom as a treasure chest, and the knowledge is like a treasure map. So once you have the knowledge to obtain more wisdom, you know the knowledge, the uh, the knowledge is the map. That's the only way that you can see it. So when you're reading the scriptures, you're obtaining the knowledge which is the map. And once you have that map, what it does is it leads you in different directions to understanding how to move in this world, you know, how to understand life, you know, how to how to obtain ultimate wisdom, which is Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah, that you know, Lord willing, he can bless you with. So you so they so you need each other. You need the treasure chest, because without the treasure chest, which is what the the wisdom, you can't have the map. Because what's the good, what, what's the use of having a chest, a treasure chest without a map? And at the same time, what's the use of having a map without a treasure chest? So you need both. So they're synonymous to each other. 
right? Which also lets you know again that wisdom in itself is a trigger. From there, what we're going to do is we're going to go to Proverbs 2 and 1. It says, My son, if thou wilt receive my words and hide my commandments with thee. And now, when you see this right here saying, Hide my commandments, it doesn't mean no. You're supposed to be like people that just read their Bible all day long and don't go out and prophesy, don't do sit downs, you know, don't try to promote the spirit of your high body. I was shining his truth and his name. What it's saying is, you know, hold it close to you. You know, when you hide something, you know, you hold it there. Just like how brothers in this truth, you know, especially, you know, within our little small circle, we like to say, you know, don't let no other brother steal your crown. You know, basically, so you want to hide it. You know, you want to, it's like when you're playing football, you want to grab that, you want to grab that, uh, that football and hold it close to you and give people the hymen. You know, you want to push them back while you, while you're going through your endeavors in life. You know, so you got to hold this dear to you. You got to hold it, hold it, uh, strong to you. You know, so that's, so it's just like, so the same thing. It's just like a treasure chest. If it's like a treasure, you're going to hold it close. You're going to have it in a secret spot, you know, that's close to you. So when anybody try to come and take it from you, you're always on guard. So let's proceed to verse two. It says, so that thou incline thine ear unto wisdom and apply thine heart to understand it. Now, when you're hearing that, it says wisdom, meaning what? You have to pay attention. You know, you have to pay attention. You know, like if someone was trying to tell you about a million dollar deal, what are you going to do? You want to be intent. You can have a bunch of women passing by. You ain't going to look at one of them because somebody's trying to put you onto the game. He's trying to tell you, listen, if you take this, if you take that, if you put these ideas together, you'll make this much money, then you can flip that, then you can make this much money. You're going to be listening. You're going to be like, yo, this, this is opportunity right here. And we all know what the scriptures, once the scriptures give you opportunity, you know, you know, your how much is the limit, man. All you need in this world is opportunity. So basically, that's what, that's what this scripture is telling you. So that thou incline thine ear unto wisdom, meaning that opportunity of having wisdom, listening, and apply thine heart to understand it, meaning you got to give your all to it, right? It says, verse 3, Yea, if thou criest after knowledge, lift up, up and lift it, lift this up the voice for understanding, meaning what? Meaning you got to beg, man. You got to get on your knees. You got to beg. You got to cry. You know, you ever seen what some of those uh, people, uh, some of those temptations back in the in ancient not the ancient days, so temptations back in like maybe the 70s, I think it was around that time. You know, they used to be on the floor just singing, baby, please, baby, 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 please, baby, please. That's how you got to be in this truth, man. on your knees praying you have to light your incense you know you got to come bare hey you can be, you can be naked man just be on the floor just you know in your own secret place with the most high you know in your own house secret man you pray you, you, you please to the most high please please bless me with wisdom please show me how to move in this world please show me of the 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 the, the, um, the spiritual riches to come you know how to how to be more worthy to make myself more of a um, uh, more righteous gem for you to come deliver me because in, in the end of the day you know if we're if we're pirates in this truth you know to help um raise up the elect the spirit of yahweh by shim al-shah and help acquire more rubies which is brothers that means you are in a self a ruby right uh it says let's go to verse four it says if thou seekest her as silver and searches for her as for hid treasures meaning what meaning you know you gotta be diligent in this thing man you gotta search you know scriptures tell you uh you know you have to search out um your own salvation with fear and trembling which meaning if you fear and trembling you're gonna be searching every day you gotta be diligent you know you don't have to tell people that want to be in the nba to be diligent when they're playing with their ball so nobody should have to tell you if you really want this truth and this knowledge you have to be diligent in the scriptures man you know you have to be reading daily you have to be trying to come up with sit downs you have to have to um not just talk it but also live it you know, and at the same time, again, it says, it says, um, if thou seekest her as silver and searchest for her as for hid things. Now, what, now what would be a good thing to make an analogy with that? You know, think of it like, you know, you have to be like a metal detector, man. You know what I'm saying? You got to be like a metal detector. When you see people using metal detectors, that's to what? To, to, to find silver, to find gold, you know. Um, also, if you think about it, when people use metal detectors, they usually use it by the beach. You know, which is what? Bottle water. 
you know and what is the water synonymous with the scriptures you know that's why uh i can't remember off top but that's why uh you know scriptures tell you that you know the, the scriptures is like living water it's always flowing so when you think about so when you think about like the water when you see like the beach you know where where, where pirates are usually always are and they're always on the water they're always on the sea what happens when that what happens when you look at the water and the beach the water always pushes certain rubies and certain gold and certain silver up to the beach man you know so that's why you always usually see people with their metal detector right there by the beach you know they had a little metal detector and they look and they're finding their gold and silver because the water always washes it up so the water washes out wisdom you know the scriptures washes out wisdom and washes jewels you know it gives you steps in life you just have to take them you have to be a metal detector and know when it's given it to you but to discern that and know that you have to pray you know so uh but that's how hard you guys seek it man you gotta be a spirit, spiritual metal detector in this truth man uh verse five it says then shalt thou understand the fear of the lord and find the knowledge of god right man you know that's the only way you're gonna find find fear meaning what through the commandments you know and when you think of yourself as a pirate when a pirate sails on the water you know they love the water you know they, they they're one with the water they love the water and at the same time they have fear and respect for it if you're a true if you believe this if you believe that you are an israelite through the spirit of yahweh by shim yahweh shah then that means that when you're on that water when you're sailing you know you feel like you're one with it. when you have the bible that's you always feel like you're one with it to this party but at the same time you have nothing but utmost respect for it you have fear for it why because you know as you being a pirate on that water sailing you know trying to pick up precious rubies trying to pick up those brothers guess what if you're not doing the right thing if you're not being diligent you're not praying and you're just doing it because you think it's just fun you know you just think it's just an act that we're doing you know that you just think it's just a new fad most times not about that man like you'll get you'll get your ship 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 wrecked that's what happened your ship will become shipwrecked man you know we've seen the most size wonders on those waters man he'll have typhoons come your way he'll have great great uh waves come at you man you know so don't think that you know it's smooth sailing no matter what you know you have to it's a, it, like i said you know you have to search out your own salvation like the scripture says serve out your own salvation with fear and trembling because that water could be calm and then it could turn rocky any second if you're not doing the right thing